Welcome back, forensic students. Today we are talking about deductive reasoning. Probably when you hear deductive reasoning, you automatically think Sherlock Holmes. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about deductive reasoning and its place in forensic. So you can think of it as a lesson in how to become a good Sherlock Holmes. All right, so just to recap, in previous lessons, we've discussed the importance of good observation skills, both as a student and as a forensic investigator. Observation skills are super important to forensic scientists for a lot of different reasons, but the brain is not designed to keep all of the information that bombards us any given day. The brain is extremely selective, and so we have talked about how the brain processes information uh, and how we can retain information. This is also the practices that forensic investigators use when they work a crime scene because they want to soak it all in. They want to remember the important things. They want to be able to separate extraneous information from information that really matters and that's pertinent to the case. Um, also, they're going to question our witnesses. And there is a lot of brain research that goes into this as well, which forensic investigators need to be aware of. And we're going to talk about that in a future lesson. So just before we jump into deductive reasoning, what are some strategies that we as students maybe could use to keep the brain from losing the information that, that comes at it? So what are some specific things that we could do? Well, maybe you are thinking um, of like using mnemonics. So mnemonics is when you take like the first letter of something that you want to remember and create a word out of it or an acronym out of it that makes sense to you. Um, we do this in biology. So remember um, ATCG, apple tree car in a garage. That's how we can help ourselves remember um, the base pairing rules for those nucleotides. Repetition is another good way or strategy that will help us keep information. Um, maybe not long term, but short term until after the test, right? Um, so if I repeat something over and over and over again, I know I used to do this with vocabulary terms. I would just go through the term definition, term definition, just read it to myself over and over and over again. And that seemed to help me remember. Also making connections. So if you can take something that you want your brain to remember and make some sort of connection, that helps you remember. And if you watch the Brain Games episode with us, um, you know that they, the guy that can remember so much information that they showcased in that episode, um, that's what he did. He, anytime he wanted to remember something, he put a visual image um, and made a connection, and that way he remembered it when he needed to regurgitate that information. So lots of different things can be done. All right, so what are some things that make a good observer? Because you're taking forensic science, so you want to make sure that your observation skills are on point, and there are some things that you can do to make sure that you are a good observer. So number one, make a conscious effort to examine the environment. So if you're working a crime scene, examine everything overall. Don't just focus on one Thing. Make sure that you look over everything. You use all five senses, well, at least four senses. I don't know that we want to taste anything um, in a crime scene, but I'm sure it's been done before, maybe. Um, number two, observe everything slowly. So slow and methodical searches are very important. And we're going to come back and talk about this in a future lesson where we talk about how we search the crime scene and scan the scene. As you scan the crime scene, you're going to want to make connections to the things that you are observing. So you're going to want to relate those observations to prior knowledge. Number four, never jump to conclusions. And number five, photography and note taking is a is a forensic investigator's friend. So we're going to also talk about those things in a future lesson. So once observations are made, investigators can then use what's called deductive reasoning to actually solve the crime. So what is deductive reasoning? 
um, deductive reasoning is just deriving a consequence from facts things that have been observed using a series of logical steps. Okay, so the brain actually takes bits and pieces. You can think of it like a puzzle where you don't have all the puzzle pieces. So the brain takes little puzzle pieces, puts together what it can, and then processes the rest based on prior knowledge. And that is deductive reasoning. All right, so um, deductive reasoning, just in another form or fashion, is when you start from things that you assume to be true and you draw conclusions that must be true if your assumptions are true, which you might be like, what did she just say? So look at the example. I think that'll make more sense. So if I were to say, make the statement, all dogs have tails, and then I were to tell you that Buddy is a dog, then you can assume that Buddy must have a tail. So what you just did is you took bits and pieces, prior knowledge, current knowledge, you put them together to derive a consequence from a fact. So the consequence is Buddy has a tail. And that process is deductive reasoning. Now, deductive reasoning is not the end-all, be-all in forensics. It's not the most accurate way of solving a problem because we know assumptions can be wrong, but that's all we've got in forensics. We have to just make sure that science drives what we, what we do, what we collect, what we analyze. Um, and then if we use science with prior knowledge and um, good investigation skills, then oftentimes um, the consequence that an investigator derives is correct. All right, so throughout this course, you're going to be relying on observation skills and deductive reasoning skills. So we're just sort of bridging the two of those. We've had lessons over both of those. Um, and we just want to make sure that we get in the practice of, as students, not necessarily being forensic students, but being forensic crime scene investigators in training. All right, that concludes our lesson for today. I'll see you in the next lesson.